Amanda Healy and Christine Pinniger from Transition Darabin. So over to Amanda and Christine. All right. Well, I'm Amanda. And I'm Christine. And we're from Transition Darabin. Um, we're located on Wurundjeri country and we're in the inner northern suburbs of Melbourne. So Darabin Council area is roughly 10 k's by 5 k's. It's quite long north to south, but quite skinny east to west. And um, so we're talking about Transition Darabin today, a um, little bit about our group, our current activities, and some reflections on challenges and learnings along the way. Now, we started our group in 2009, which means we will officially turn 15 in 2024, which is a bit scary. <laughs> uh, we feel like our 10 year anniversary only happened last year. <laughs> Um, so we, as a group, consciously try to run our activities across the council area of Darwin, and we consider ease of access when we're setting up um, activities. Um, we see ourselves as an umbrella group. Um, we have lots of smaller projects underneath, and um, we'll go through some of these just briefly now. Okay, so food swaps are almost our mainstay. Um, they're regular, they're very easy to run. We hold them monthly on a Saturday morning for one hour at three locations across Darabin. In our Boomerang Bags group, we have currently have a small number of individuals who sew at home, um, providing bags for a local food relief program and some local shops. Um, this activity could very easily be scaled up um, when inspiration hits somebody to do that. Repair Cafe is the most labour intensive activity we run and it's the one with the greatest overheads but always has a good feel. The idea is that fixers, preferably local, offer their time and skill and people with goods to fix bring them along and sit with the fixer to learn um, how the repair is done. Goods are weighed as a measure of waste saved from landfill. We hold a Repair Cafe each two months. We find that's plenty. Monthly would provide too little break in between time for the organisers. Darwin Repair Cafe turns five this month. Happy birthday to us. Happy birthday to us indeed. And what's on hmm. the next slide? Fix it in your Yeah, so oh, fix it. Go down. Apologies. Well, yeah, there we go. Um, so Fix It Newlands is like a smaller version of Repair Cafe, but it's about people fixing their own things in the company of others. And this group um, continued on during the pandemic via Zoom and they're back to meeting face-to-face -face now, which is lovely. Um, some other activities that we do, we have some fundraising events. Um, so occasional activities just for social, social fun. Um, we sometimes set up a stall at community events and um, we, we meet monthly and we, yeah, we keep going with a coordination group that meets the first Monday of the month. And then of course, the pandemic that we can't ignore. So after the initial shock of the world coming to a sudden halt, we realised that the pandemic really provided a test of community resilience. In many ways, exactly the type of situation the transition movement says we need to prepare for. So how ready and resilient were we? We purchased a Zoom account so we could maintain regular meetings to keep in touch ourselves run workshops and offer other groups the use of the link. We put a call out for local people with skills to offer but short of work due to COVID, willing to run a workshop either in person or online, depending on restrictions at the time. This brought out some surprise offers that we wouldn't have thought of. The clown picture here is one example. Anna had developed an environmental program she ran at schools or parties. The one pictured here was a live workshop. She later ran, ran one online with children on Zoom from home. The Repair Cafe coordinator, Cheryl, who's in with us tonight, um, kept fixing things at home and posted photos and recorded weights. This encouraged others to do the same, so we effectively had a virtual repair cafe for several months until we could resume the real deal. Some food swappers decided to keep our usual monthly routine with a tub at the front fence for the day. People could add or remove things while walking within their five kilometre range, which people in Melbourne will know all about. Um, <laughs> The coordinating group also decided that the enforced lull provided a chance for some background admin work. 
And so what keeps us going as a group in Transition Darwin? So we have a spirit of cooperation and a shared goal. Um, we have respect for each other's skills and preferences and varying levels of energy and capacity within the group. So we accept the natural ebb and flow of the group over the years. Um, we also have a really good organizational foundation that grounds our activities. So they, this, the setup group in, back in 2009 were very thorough in their organizational skills. And one of the other things that is great for us is that we have a local council, so Darwin Council, who was the first to declare a climate emergency in the world. And so they provide really good support for our activities and funding and promotional um, activities. So great for us. And we'd like to leave you with this image, which we created in February 2023. As the finale to our planning meeting this year, we were asked to make a visual poem of our group using slips of paper with comments captured during the day, a piece of butcher's paper and texts and a time limit. The result was quite amazing. This is the picture we created in no more than 10 minutes. The tree image quickly popped up, seeing the soil and roots as the community on which we draw and the branches or other trees being our activities or other groups we relate to. It was great fun and an energizing way to end the day. And just finally, um, if you want to get in touch with us, we've just put our details here and we'll share the pack after. Now we do have other um, activities that we've run in the past and that we're running now occasionally, and we'll add those in the pack and we can uh, share that later with you. But um, yeah, time for questions, I guess. Thank you.